Synopsis of the Fifth Tablet Ninma arrives on Earth with a group of female nurses. She delivers seeds to grow elixir-providing plants. She brings Enlil news of their out-of-wedlock son, Ninurta. In the Abzu, Inki establishes an abode and mining sites. In the Eden, Enlil builds space and other facilities. Nibiruans on Earth, number 600. 300 Agigi operate the facilities on Lemu. Exiled for date raping Sud, Enlil learns of the hidden weapons. Sud becomes Inki's spouse, Ninlil, bears a son, Nanar. Ninma joins Inki in the Abzu, bears him daughters. Ninki, Inki's spouse, arrives with their son, Marduk. Clans form on earth as Inki and Enlil beget more sons. Beset by hardships, the Igigi launch a coup against Enlil. Ninurta defeats their leader Anzu in aerial battles. The Anunnaki, driven to produce gold faster, mutiny. Enlil and Ninurta denounce the mutineers. Inki suggests to artificially fashion primitive workers. From the planet Lemu, the chariot departed. Toward Earth, the journey it continued. Around the moon, they made circuits, a way station thereon to explore. Around the earth they made circuits toward a splashdown slowing. In the waters beside Iridu did Nangal the chariot bring down. To a quay by Enlil constructed they stepped off. Boats were no longer needed. Enlil and Inki their sister with embraces greeted. With Nangal the pilot they locked arms. The heroes, male and female, by the present heroes were with shouts greeted. All that the chariot had brought was quickly unloaded. Rocket ships and sky ships and the tools by Inky designed, and provisions of all kinds. Of all that on Nibiru transpired of the death and burying of Alelu, Ninma her brothers told. Of the way station on Lemu and the commanding by Anzu, she to them related. Inky of that uttered approval. Enlil words of bewilderment uttered. That is Anu's decision. His word is unalterable, Ninma to Enlil was saying. For the malady's relief I have brought, Ninma to her brothers said. From her pouch a bag of seeds she brought out, seeds in the soil to be sown. A host of bushes from the seed shall sprout, a juicy fruit they will produce. The juice, an elixir, shall form, for drinking by the heroes it shall be good. Their ailments it will chase away, happier their mood it shall make. In a cool place the seeds need to be sown, by warmth and water need they nourishing. So did Minma to her brothers say. The place that for this is perfect I will to you show, Enlil to her said. It is where the landing place was fashioned, where an abode of cedar wood I have made. In Enlil's sky ship the two of them, Enlil and Ninma, skyward soared. To the landing place in the snow-covered mountains by the cedar forest brother and sister went. On the great stone platform the sky ship landed. To Enlil's abode they went. Once inside, Enlil embraced her. With favor he kissed Nimba. O oh, my sister, my beloved, Enlil to her whispered. By her loins he grabbed her. Into her womb his semen he did not pour. Of our son Ninurta word I bring you, Nimba to him softly said. A young prince he is, for adventure he is ready. To join you on earth he is prepared. If here you stay... Let us Ninurta our son bring over, Enlil to her said. To the landing place heroes were arriving, rocket ships by sky ships to the platform they carried. From the pouch of Ninma the seeds were obtained, in the valley's soil they were sown, a fruit from Nibiru on earth to be grown. In the sky ship Enlil and Ninma to Iridu returned. On the way Enlil to her the landscape showed, the Eden's extent to her he showed. From the skies Enlil to her his plans explained. An everlasting plan have I designed to her he was saying. That which for all time construction shall determine I have laid out. Away from Iridu, where dry land begins, my quarters shall be. Larsa will be its name. A place for directing it shall become. On the banks of the Baranu, the river of deep waters, it will be located. A twin thereof a city shall in future arise, Lagash I shall name it. Between the two on the plains a line have I drawn. Sixty leagues thereafter a hilling city shall come into being, 
a city of your own it shall be, Shurabak, the haven city I shall name it. On the center line it shall be located, to the fourth city it shall be leading. Nibruki, earth's crossing place I will name it, a bond heaven-earth in it I shall establish. The tablets of destinies it shall house, all missions it will control. With Iridu five cities there shall be counted, to eternity they shall exist. On a crystal tablet Enlil to Nimma the master plan was showing. On the tablet she saw more markings of them of Enlil she inquired. Beyond the five cities a chariot place I shall henceforth build. From Nibiru to earth directly to arrive. Enlil to her was responding. Why by Anu's plans for Lemu Enlil was bewildered Nimma then understood. My brother, magnificent is your plan for the five cities, to him, Nimma was saying. The creation of Shurabak, a city for healing, as my abode, for my own to be, is a matter for which grateful I am. Beyond that plan, do not transgress your father. Your brother, too, do not offend. You are wise as well as beautiful, Enlil, to her said. In the Abzu, Inky plans was also conceiving where to build his house. Where for heroes dwelling to prepare, where the bowels of the earth to enter. In his skyship, the extent of the Abzu he measured, its districts he did carefully survey. A distant land the Abzu was, beyond the waters from the Eden it was away. A rich land it was, bursting with riches, perfect in fullness. Mighty rivers rushed across the region, great waters there rapidly flowed, an abode by the flowing waters inky for himself established. To the midst of the Abzu, to a place of pure waters, Inky betook himself. In that land, the place of deepness, Inky determined for the heroes into earth's bowels to descend. The earth sputter Inky there established, therewith in the earth a gash to make. By way of tunnels, earth's innards to reach, the golden veins to uncover. Nearby, that which crunches and that which crushes, he emplaced the gold-bearing oars to crunch and crush by skyships to be carried, to the landing place in the Cedar Mountains to be brought, therefrom by rocket ships to the way station on Lemu to be transported. On earth more heroes were arriving, some to the Eden were assigned, some in the Abzu task were given. Larsa and Lagash by Enlil were constructed, Shurabak for Ninma he did establish. With her therein a host of female healers were dwelling, young ones who give succor. In Nibruki, Enlil, a bond heaven-earth was assembling, from there all missions to command. Between Iridu and the Abzu, Inki was journeying, back and forth for supervising he went. On Lemu, construction was progressing, heroes from the way station were also arriving. A shar, two shars were the preparations lasting, then Anu gave the word. On earth the seventh day it was, a day of resting by Inki at the beginning decreed. At every place the heroes were assembled, a message from Anu from Nibiru beam they overheard. In the Eden they were assembled, Enlil was there in command. With him was Ninma, her host of young ones by her side were assembled. Elagar, who of Iridu was the master, was there. Abgal, who the landing place commanded, also stood. In the Abzu were the heroes assembled, under the gaze of Inki they stood. With Inki was his vizier Izamud. Nungal the pilot was there too. On Lemu the heroes were assembled, with their proud commander Anzu they stood. Six hundred were on earth, three hundred on Lemu were gathered. In all there were nine hundred. The words of Anu the king they all heard. Heroes of Nibiru, you are the saviors. The fate of all is in your hands. Your success shall for eternity be recorded. By glorious names you shall be called. Those who on earth are shall as Anunnaki be known. Those who from heaven to earth came. Those who on Lemu are, Igigi shall be named. Those who observe and see they shall be. All that is required is ready. Let the gold start coming. Let Nibiru be saved. Now, this is the account of Inki and Enlil and Ninma, their loves and espousals, and by their sons, the rivalries. Offspring of Anu, the three leaders were. By different mothers were they born. 
Enki was the firstborn son. A concubine of Anu was his mother. Enlil by Antu, the spouse of Anu, was born. The legal heir he thus became. Ninma by another concubine was mothered. A half-sister of the two half-brothers she was. The firstborn daughter of Anu she was. By her name title Ninma this was indicated. Greatly beautiful she was, full of wisdom, one quick to learn. Ea, as Enki then was named by Anu to espouse Ninma, was chosen, thereby their offspring son the legal successor thereafter to become. Ninma of Enlil, a dashing commander, was enamored. By him she was seduced. Into her womb his seed he poured. A son from Enlil's seed she bore. Ninurta, the two have named him. By the deed was Anu angered. As punishment, he, Ninma, ever to be a spouse forbade. Ea, his bride-to-be, by Anu's decree, abandoned. A princess named Damkina, he instead espoused. A son, an heir to them, was born. Marduk, they named him. One in a pure place born, it meant. As for Enlil, a son not by his spousal he had, a spouse by his side-to-be he did not have. It was on earth, not on Nibiru, that Enlil became espoused. The account of that is one of rape and exile and love that brought forgiveness, and of more sons that were only half-brothers. On earth it was summer. To his abode in the cedar forest Enlil retreated. In the cedar forest was Enlil walking in the cool of the day. In a cool mountain stream some of Nibma's young ones, to the landing place assigned, were bathing, by the beauty and grace of one, Sud was her name, Enlil was enchanted. To his cedar wood abode, Enlil, her invited. Come, partake with me in the elixir of Nibiru's fruit that grew here. So to her he said. Sud into Enlil's abode entered. The elixir in a cup to her Enlil presented. Sud drank, Enlil drank too. To her Enlil of intercourse was speaking. Unwilling was the lass. My vagina is too little, it knows not copulation to Enlil, she was saying. To her, Enlil of kissing was speaking, unwilling was the lass. My lips are too small, they know not kissing to Enlil, she was saying. Enlil laughed and embraced her, he laughed and he kissed her. His semen into her womb he poured. To Ninma, Sud's commander, the immoral deed was reported. Enlil, immoral one, for your deed judgment you shall face. So did Nimma to Enlil in anger say. In the presence of fifty Anunnaki, seven who judge were assembled. Seven who judge on Enlil a punishment decreed. Let Enlil from all cities be banished. To a land of no return let him exiled be. In a sky chamber they made Enlil leave the landing place. Abgal was its pilot. To a land of no return Enlil was taken, never to return. In the sky chamber the two of them journeyed, to another land was their direction. There, amidst forbidding mountains, a place of desolation, Abgal, the sky chamber, landed. This your place of exile shall be, Abgal to Enlil was saying. Not perchance have I it chosen, to Enlil he was saying. A secret of Enki in it is hidden. In the nearby cave Enki seven weapons of terror has hidden. From Alelu's celestial chariot, he had them removed. Take the weapons into your possession. With the weapons, your freedom attain. So was Abgal to his commander, saying, A secret of Enki to Enlil he did reveal. Then from the secret place Abgal departed, Enlil alone was there left. In the Eden, Sud to Ninma, her commander, words was speaking, By Enlil's seed am I pregnant. A child of Enlil in my womb has been conceived. Ninma, Sud's words to Enki conveyed, The Lord of earth he was, on earth he was supreme. They summoned Sud before seven who judge. Will you take Enlil as your spouse, they her ask. Words of consent she uttered. The words by Abgal to Enlil in his exile were conveyed. To espouse Sud, Enlil from his exile was returned. By that did Enki and Nimma to him a pardon give. Enlil's official spouse Sud was declared. On her the name title Ninlil, Lady of the Command, was bestowed. Thereafter to Ninlil and Enlil a son was born, Nanner, the Bright One, 
Ninlil him named. He was the first of the Anunnaki on earth to be conceived, one of Nibiru's royal seed on an alien planet to be born. It was after that that Inki to Ninmu was speaking, Come be with me in the Abzu. In the midst of the Abzu, in a place of pure waters, an abode have I established. With a bright metal, silver is its name, it is embellished. With a deep blue stone, lapis lazuli, it is adorned. Come, Nimma, be with me, your adoration of Enlil abandon. To the Abzu, to the abode of Inki, Nimma then journeyed. Inki there to her words of loving spoke, of how for each other intended sweet words to her he whispered. You are still my beloved, to her he said, caressing. He embraced her, he kissed her, she caused his phallus to water. Inky, his semen into the womb of Nimma poured. Give me a son, give me a son, he cried out. She took the semen into her womb, the semen of Inky her impregnated. One day of Nibiru was a month of earth for her. Two days, three days, four days of Nibiru like months of earth they were. Five and six and seven and eight days of months were completed. The ninth count of motherhood was completed. Nimma was in travail. To a child she gave birth. The newborn was a female. On the banks of the river in the Abzu, a daughter to Inki and Nimma was born. Inki by a daughter was disappointed. Kiss the young one to him, Nimma said. Kiss the young one, Inki to his vizier, Izimud said. A son I desired. A son by my half-sister I must have. Again he kissed Nimma. By her loins he grabbed her. His semen into her womb he poured. Again she was with child. Again a daughter to Inky she bore. A son, a son by you I must have, Inky to her cried out. Ninma he kissed again. Thereupon Ninma against Inky a cursing tittered. Whatever food he ate was poison in his innards. His jaw hurt, his tooth hurt, his ribs were hurting. Izumud the Anunnaki summoned to Ninma for relief they were pleading. To distance himself from Ninma's vulva, Inky by raised arm swore. One by one, she his ailments removed, from her curse Inky was freed. To the Eden Nimma returned, never to be espoused, Anu's command was fulfilled. To earth Inky his spouse Damkina with her son Marduk summoned. Ninki, lady of earth, the title she was granted. By her, and by concubines, Inky five more sons had. These were their names, Nergal and Gibble, Ninagal and Ningazita and Dumuzi, the youngest. To earth Enlil and Nimma their son Ninurta summoned. By his spouse Ninlil did Enlil one more son have. To Nanar a full brother, Ishkur was his name. Three sons in all did Enlil have. None by concubines were they born. Two clans were thus on earth established. Their rivalries to wars did lead. Now this is the account of the mutiny of the Agigi, and how Anzu to death was put for stealing the tablets of destinies punished. From the Abzu gold from earth's veins to the landing place was carried, thence Agigi in rocket ships to the way station on Lemu transported. From the planet Lemu in celestial chariots was the precious metal to Nibiru brought. On Nibiru the gold was to the finest dust fashioned to protect the atmosphere it was employed. Slowly was the breach in the heavens healing, slowly was Nibiru saved. In the Eden, the five cities were perfected. Inki in Iridu, a sparkling abode made, upon soil skyward raised, he built it. Like a mountain, he raised it above the ground, in a good place he built it. Damkina, his spouse, therein dwelt. To his son Marduk, Inki was their wisdom teaching. In Nibruki, Enlil, the bond heaven-earth established, a sight to see it was. At its center, a heavenward tall pillar, the sky itself was reaching. On a platform that cannot be overturned, it was placed. Therewith, the words of Enlil, all settlements encompassed. On Lemu and in Nibiru, they were heard. From there, beams were raised, the heart of all the lands they could search. Its eyes could scan all the lands, its net unwanted approach impossible made. In its lofty house a crown-like chamber was the center. To distant heavens it peered. Toward the horizon was its gaze, the heavenly zenith it perfected. In its dark hallowed chamber, 
by twelve emblems was the family of the sun marked. On Mies were the secret formulas of sun and moon, Nibiru and earth, and eight celestial gods recorded. The tablets of destinies in the chamber their hues emitted. With them in Lil all comings and goings over Saul. On earth the Anunnaki toiled. Of work and sustenance they were complaining. By earth's quick cycles they were disturbed. Of the elixir they only small rations were given. In the Eden the Anunnaki toiled. In the Abzu the work was more backbreaking. By teams were Anunnaki sent back to Nibiru. By teams new ones were arriving. The Agigi on Lemu dwelling were the loudest in complaining. When from Lemu to earth they descend, a rest place on earth they were demanding. With Anu did Enlil and Inki words exchange, the king they consulted. Let the leader come to earth, with Anzu have discussions, so did Anu to them say. Anzu to earth from the heavens descended, the words of complaints to Enlil and Inki he delivered. Let Anzu of the workings gain understanding, Inki to Enlil was saying. I will the Abzu to him show, you the bond heaven earth to him reveal, to the words of Inki, Enlil consented. Inki to Anzu the Abzu did show, the toil in the mines to him he presented. Enlil, Anzu, to Nibruki invited, to the hallowed dark chamber he let him enter. In the innermost sanctuary the tablets of destinies to Anzu he explained. What the Anunnaki in the five cities were doing to Anzu was shown. To the Igigi who at the landing place were arriving, relief he promised. To discuss the complaints of the Igigi, he to Nibruki then returned. A prince among the princes was Anzu, of royal seed his ancestry he counted. Evil faults filled his heart when to the bond heaven earth he returned. To take away the tablets of destinies was he scheming. Of the decrees of heaven and earth to take control in his heart he was planning. The removal of the Enlil ship in his heart he conceived. To rule Igigi and Anunnaki was his aim. Unsuspecting, Enlil at the entrance to the sanctuary Anzu let be stationed. Unsuspecting, Enlil left the sanctuary. For a cooling swim he went away. With evil purpose, Anzu the tablets of destinies seized. In a sky chamber he flew away. To the mountain of the sky chambers he swiftly went. There, in the landing place, rebellious Igigi for him were waiting. To declare Anzu king of earth and Lemu, they were preparing. In the sanctuary of Nibruki, the brilliance petered out, the humming quieted down, silence in the place prevailed. Suspended were the sacred formulas. In Nibruki, Enlil was speechless. By the treachery, he was overwhelmed. To Inki angry words he spoke of the ancestry of Anzu he him questioned. In Nibruki the leaders gathered, the Anunnaki who decree fates with Anu were consulting. Anzu must be seized, the tablets to the sanctuary must be returned, thus did Anu decree. Who shall the rebel face? Who shall the tablets retrieve? The leaders ask each other. With the tablets of destinies in his possession, invincible is Anzu, to each other they were saying. Ninurta, by his mother encouraged, from the assembled step forward. Enlil's warrior I shall be, Anzu I shall vanquish, thus was Ninurta saying. To the mountainside Ninurta set his course to vanquish the fugitive Anzu he undertook. Anzu from his hideout Ninurta was mocking, The tablets are my protection, invincible I am. Lightning darts Ninurta at Anzu directed, the arrows could not approach Anzu, backward they turned. The battle was stilled, Ninurta's weapons Anzu did not vanquish. Inki then to Ninurta counsel gave. With your whirlwind, stir up a storm, let the dust cover Anzu's face, let it the wings of his skybird ruffle. For his son Enlil a mighty weapon fashioned, a Tilu missile it was. To your stormer weapon attach it. When wing to wing near, at Anzu shoot it. Thus did Enlil his son Ninurta instruct. When wing to wing near each other, let the missile fly as a lightning. Again Ninurta in his whirlwind soared. Anzu against him in the skybird rose to challenge. Wing to wing, Anzu in anger shouted, This battle will be your destruction. Ninurta the advice of Inki followed. With his whirlwind a dust storm he created. 
The dust Anzu's face covered, the pinions of his skybird were exposed. Into their midst Ninurta the missile let loose, a fiery brilliance Anzu's pinions engulfed. Like butterflies, his wings began to flutter. To the ground Anzu came falling. The earth shook. The skies became darkened. The fallen Anzu Ninurta made captive. From him the tablets he retrieved. From the mountaintop the Igigi were watching. When to the landing place Ninurta came, they trembled and kissed his feet. Ninurta, the captive Abgal and Anunnaki set free. To Anu and Enlil his victory he announced. To Nibruki he then returned. In its innermost chamber, the tablets were reinstalled. Once again the brilliance therein returned. The hum of Mies in the tablets was restored. Before the seven who judge, Anzu for a judgment was taken. Enlil and Ninlil his spouse, Inki and his spouse Ninki, the one beforehand as Damkina known, and the sons Nanar and Marduk were there. Nima also was in judging. Ninurta of the evil deeds spoke. There was no justification. Let death be the penalty, he said. The Igigi by right were complaining. A rest place on earth they do need, Marduk in counter argued. By his evil deed all the Anunnaki and Igigi Anzu did endanger, Enlil said. Inki and Ninma with Enlil agreed. The evil must be extinguished, they said. To death by execution the seven judged Anzu. With a killing ray, Anzu's life breath was extinguished. Let his body to the vultures be left, Ninurta said. Let him on Lemu be buried in a cave next to Alelu, be laid to rest, Inki was saying. From the same ancestral seed the two of them were. Let Marduk the body to Lemu carry, let Marduk there as commander stay. So was Inki to the judges, suggesting, Let it so be, Enlil said. Now this is the account of how Bad Tibera, the metal city, was established, and how in the 40th Shar the Anunnaki in the Abzu mutinied. In the 25th Shar was Anzu judged and executed. The unrest of the Agigi it subdued but left it simmering. To Lemu Marduk was sent, the spirits of the Agigi to raise, to their well-being pay attention. On earth the changes were by Enlil and Inki discussed to avoid unrest on earth they were considering. The stays on earth are too prolonged, to each other they were saying. Nimma for counsel they asked. By her changing visage they were alarmed. Gold to Nibiru must more quickly flow. Salvation must be faster provided, they all agreed. Ninurta in the innards of planets learned was he. To his elders words of wisdom he was saying. Let a metal city be established, therein the gold ores to be smelted and refined. Therefrom, less weighty cargoes from Earth shall be lofted. Each rocket ship more gold could carry. Room for Anunnaki to Nibiru return there shall be. Let the tire to Nibiru return. Let fresh ones them on Earth replace. Enlil and Inki and Ninma of Ninurta's suggestion were in favor. Anu was consulted and his approval gave. In the Eden was the metal city planned. On that location Enlil did insist. With materials from Nibiru was it constructed. With tools from Nibiru was it equipped. Three shars the construction lasted. Bad Tibera was its name given. Ninurta, who made the suggestion, was its first commander. The flow of gold to Nibiru was thereby eased and quickened. Those who to Earth and Lemu at the beginning of the prior times had come, to Nibiru were returning. Al-Algar and Abgal and Nungal among them were. The newcomers who them replaced were younger and eager to the cycles of Earth and Lemu and the other rigors they were not accustomed. On Nibiru, whence they had come, the breach in the atmosphere was healing, the great calamities on the planet and in its heavens the younger ones did not know. Of their golden mission, excitement and adventure they especially cherished. As by Ninurta conceived, the ores from the Abzu were delivered. In Bad Tibera they were smelted and refined, by rocket ships to Lemu they were sent. In celestial chariots from Lemu to Nibiru was the pure gold delivered. As by Ninurta conceived, from the Abzu to Nibiru the gold flowed. What was not conceived was unrest by the new coming Anunnaki, who in the Abzu toiled. Truth be said, Inki to what was brewing heed was not given. To other matters in the Abzu his attention was directing. 
With that which in the Abzu grows and lives, fascination he acquired. Of the differences between what on earth and what on the Biru appeared, he wished to learn. How maladies by earth's cycles and atmosphere were caused, he wished to uncover. In the Abzu, by the gushing waters, a wondrous study place he erected. With all manners of tools and equipment, he furnished it. House of Life, he called the place. To it, his son Ningazita, he invited. Sacred formulas, tiny me's, the secrets of life and death possessing they shaped. The mysteries of living and dying of earth's creatures they to unravel salt. With some living creatures, Inky was especially enamored. They lived among the tall trees, their front legs as hands they were using. In the tall grasses of the steppes, odd creatures were seen erect they seemed to be walking. Absorbed was Inky in those studies. What was among the Anunnaki brewing he noticed not. First to notice trouble was Ninurta, a lessening of gold ores at Bad Tibera he observed. By Enlil was Ninurta to the Abzu dispatched. What was ongoing to discover? By Inugi, the chief officer, to the excavations he was accompanied. Complaints of the Anunnaki he with his own ears heard. They were backbiting and lamenting. In the excavations they were grumbling. Unbearable is the toil. To Ninurta they were saying. Ninurta, this to his uncle Inki reported. Let us Enlil summon, Inki said. Enlil in the Abzu arrived, in a house near the excavations he was stationed. Let us unnerve Enlil in his dwelling, mine-working heroes shouted. Of the heavy work let him relieve us. Let us proclaim war with hostilities, let us gain relief, others shouted. The Anunnaki in the excavations the words of incitement heeded. To their tools they set fire, fire to their axes they put. They troubled Anugi, chief officer of the mining, in the tunnels they him seized. They held him as they went, to the doorway of Enlil's dwelling they made their way. It was night, halfway through the watch it was. Enlil's dwelling they surrounded, their tools as torches they high held. Kaukau, -kau, the gateway's guardian, bolted the door and Nusku aroused. Nusku, Enlil's vizier, roused his lord, got him out of bed, thus saying, My lord, your house is surrounded, battling Anunnaki to your gate came up. Enlil summoned Inki, Enlil Ninurta summoned to his presence. What do my own eyes see? Is it against me that this thing is done? Thus was Enlil to them, saying, Who is of the hostilities the instigator? The Anunnaki stood together. Every single one of us hostilities has declared. Excessive is the toil, our work is heavy, great is the distress. So they were to Enlil, saying. Words of the happenings Enlil to Anu beamed. Of what is Enlil accused, Anu inquired. The work, not Enlil, is the trouble causing, Inki to Anu was saying. The lamentation is heavy, every day the complaints we could hear. The goal must be obtained, Anu was saying. The work must continue. Release Anugi for consultations, Enlil to the hostile Anunnaki said. Anugi was released to the leaders he was thus saying. Ever since Earth's heat has been rising, the toil is excruciating, unbearable it is. Let the rebels to Nibiru return. Let new ones come in their stead, Ninurta said. Perchance new tools you can fashion? Enlil to Inki said, for the Anunnaki heroes the tunnels to avoid. Let us summon my son Ningazita, counsel with hire I wish to take. Inki thus responded. They summoned Ningazita from the house of life he came. With him Inki huddled, words amongst them they exchanged. A solution is possible, Inki was saying. Let us create a Lulu, a primitive worker, the hardship work to take over. Let the being the toil of the Anunnaki carry on his back. Astounded were the besieged leaders, speechless indeed they were. Who ever heard of a being afresh created, a worker who the Anunnaki's work can do? They summoned Nimma, one who of healing and succor was much knowing. Inky's words to her they repeated. Who ever of such a thing heard, they her ask. The task is unheard of, she to Inky said. All beings from a seed have descended, one being from another over eons did develop. None from nothing ever came. How right you are, my sister, Inky said, smiling. A secret of the Abzu let me to you all reveal. The being that we need, it already exists. All that we have to do is put on it the mark of our essence. 
Thereby a Lulu, a primitive worker, shall be created, so did Inky to them say. Let us hereby a decision make, a blessing to my plan give, to create a primitive worker by the mark of our essence to fashion him.